Hey everybody, and welcome to this module on goal setting. My name's Gareth, and I work with Health Counselling and Disability Services, and I have a personal and professional interest in wellbeing and productivity. What I want to cover in today's presentation is what is goal setting, why should you set goals, how do you set goals in a way that leads to the best outcomes, and how to get started on your own goal setting. So we'll start with what is goal setting. So at its simplest, goal setting is the process of identifying something that you want to accomplish or achieve, and then outlining a plan to achieve it. For example, I want to get an undergraduate psychology degree. That's a goal, but it doesn't include any detail about how we're going to get there, which is important when we're talking about goal setting. So instead, I want to get an undergraduate psychology degree, and I will achieve that by getting a credit average on each of the necessary topics over the three years of study. So we have an outcome we want to achieve, and we have a basic plan for how to get there. Now you might be looking at this and thinking that probably more planning is required than just that single goal. And you'd be correct, and we'll get back to that in a tick. But I want to take a moment first to look at why we should set goals. So why should we set goals? Well put simply, goal setting increases the likelihood of you achieving what you want to achieve. So people who set goals, on average, show higher levels of performance in the domain in which they set goals than those who don't. So for example, students who set goals tend to show higher academic performance than those who don't. Workers like me who set goals in relation to their work show higher levels of productivity than those who don't. And people who set personal goals in their personal lives tend to report higher levels of life satisfaction. So why is this the case? Well, we think there's a few reasons as to why goals help. The first is clarity and purpose. So goals help people clarify and articulate what is important to them. So if I sit down and I write out my goals, it forces me to reflect on what I want in my life. And this helps me prioritize what I should focus on. So goals direct your attention, and what you direct your attention towards grows. Second is motivation. So goals provide motivation and something to work towards. And humans have a natural tendency for exploration, for moving forward, for adventure. And goals give us a direction and purpose for that exploration. The third factor is positive affect. So when we set and achieve goals, we get positive feelings. It feels good to set and achieve goals. And then this encourages us to set and achieve more goals, and so forth. Humans like achieving things. It's kind of baked into our basic psychology. It's a core psychological need. Thus, setting goals helps us meet this core psychological need. Fourth is persistence. So goals help us persist at a task for longer because they remind us of what we wanted and what we needed to do to get there. If we haven't written our goals, then we can kind of pretend that we didn't have them. and We're more likely to disengage from a task if it gets difficult or unrewarding. And the final factor is self-monitoring and self-regulation. So goals teach us or help us to self-monitor and self-regulate. So what they do is they teach us to consistently assess the discrepancy between where we want to be and where we are now. And that helps us adjust how we're thinking, how we're feeling, and how we're acting in the present moment to reduce that discrepancy. So how do you set good goals, or what constitutes good goal-setting practice? First thing is to make your goals SMART. You might have heard this acronym before. It refers to a goal being specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. And rather than explain each of those individually, I'll give you an example. So you might decide one day that you'd like to take up meditation, which I think would be a very good decision. But whilst I think that's a noble goal, it's not a particularly well-articulated goal at this point. But we can make it better articulated by applying the SMART criteria. So for example, I'm going to use the Smiling Mind app to meditate for 10 minutes each day after lunch for two weeks to see if it reduces my stress. And yes, that's a lot longer than the previous goal, but it's got all the important SMART elements in there. It's measurable. You'll know by the end of the two weeks whether or not you meditated each day and for the requisite time. It's achievable. So you didn't set a goal of meditating for an hour or two or going on a three-month retreat. You set an achievable amount of meditation to start with, 10 minutes. It's relevant because you attached it to something else that you want to achieve, in this case, stress management. And it's time-bound because you set two weeks as the period of time 
in which you would like to test whether or not meditation is helpful to you. So the second characteristic of good goal setting is that good goals don't usually exist on their own. They tend to travel in packs. So let's go back to that example we were looking at before. I want to get an undergraduate degree, and I will achieve that by getting a credit average on each of the necessary topics over the three years of study. Now we look at that, and it's a good goal, but we all realize that we're probably going to have to do other things in order for that to happen. We're going to have to set some sub-goals. So for example, to achieve that outcome, we're probably going to have to devote a certain amount of time each weekday to doing the necessary readings. We're going to have to start our assignments as early as possible, maybe four weeks before their due date, to ensure we know what the assignment is and we do our best work on it. We might use the Studiosity service to get feedback on individual assignments to improve our writing quality over time. And we might dedicate ourselves to watching all of these SLSS study videos so that we become a study ninja. So we've got a bigger goal, but then that requires a number of sub-goals for it to actually happen. So one useful way of thinking about this is we have outcome goals, the things that we want to achieve, and we have process goals, the things that we're going to need to do to get there. A third characteristic of good goals or good goal setting is that they're usually related to something that's meaningful to you. So say you decided you wanted to get more exercise, and you set yourself the goal of walking around the lake at Flinders for 20 minutes each workday at lunchtime, which is a smart goal. Now, to increase the likelihood that you'll actually follow through, you could think more about why you want to get more exercise. So maybe it's about being healthy. Maybe it's about connecting with colleagues or peers or friends. Or maybe it's about being more connected to nature. So try to connect your goals to a higher purpose or a higher meaning. And this is particularly relevant when the task itself that you need to do is maybe unpleasant or you're not particularly looking forward to it. Characteristic four. So good goals tend to be what you want to achieve rather than what you want to avoid. So let me explain that in a different way. So good goals articulate what you want to happen, not what you don't want to happen. So I'll give you an example in relation to study. So a good goal in relation to study would be to get a credit average for the semester. That's phrased as something you want and something that you would like to move towards. A not so great goal would be, I don't want to fail a topic in this semester. That's okay as a goal, but it's better to articulate our goals as things we want to approach rather than things we want to avoid. Characteristic five of good goal setting is that the difficulty of the goal is matched to the context. So let me give you a couple of examples. So if we're talking about single outcome situations, so handing in of an assignment. So once the assignment is handed in, that is the activity finished. In that situation, you want to aim for something just outside of your ability. So if you normally get credits for assignments, then aim to try and get a distinction for this next one. But if we're talking about habit formation, for example, where you want to be doing the same behavior on a regular basis, for example, daily meditation, then you want to set your initial goal at a level that you can achieve reliably first. So an example here would be you would aim for five minutes a day or maybe 10 minutes a day. Get the habit formed first and then you can increase the amount of time that you're meditating after that. Characteristic six of good goal setting is that we have a mix of what we call mastery and performance goals. So performance goals are where you outline the performance level that you want to achieve. So in the case of study, this might say uh, by the end of semester, I'd like my GPA to be above 5.5. That's outlining the performance level that you want to achieve. A mastery goal, though, is more about what it is you actually want to learn. Okay, so an example might be, I want to name all the major parts or be able to name all the major parts of the human body. And what you're after is a mix of these two goals. So performance goals are good. It's good to set the level at which you want to perform. But if you only set performance goals, you lose sight of the fact that you came to university to learn things, not just get a particular grade. Characteristic seven of good goal setting is that goals just aren't about achievements, even though that's primarily what I've been talking about up until this point. But goals can also be about the kind of person that you want to be and the kind of life that you want to lead. So I want to treat people with respect or I want to see the funny side of life. 
or I want to be close to nature. So not all goal setting is about what we want to achieve. It can be about the kind of person that we want to be and the life that we want to lead. Characteristic eight, don't just limit your goal setting to your studies. So there are other aspects of your life um, that are happening outside of your studies that you might also want to set goals in relation to. So they might be gardening, uh, art, music, or sport. And interestingly, and we've linked to this uh, particular study in some of the supplementary materials for this module, uh, we've linked to a study that showed that students who set personal goals and didn't necessarily set any study goals still do better at their studies. This tells us that goal setting more broadly is a, a powerful way of improving our performance across multiple domains of our life. Okay, characteristic number nine. So it's possible if you set a lot of goals that you might end up becoming a little bit frightened of all your goals. So if your goals are starting to feel very anxiety provoking, then dial them back in terms of number or in terms of difficulty. So goals have their best effect when they're experienced as a challenge, something that we want to achieve, something that we want to move towards, something that pushes us just outside of our comfort level that we can move towards successfully. So don't make the process of setting goals too punishing. If you Characteristic 10. Okay, so you've got a bunch of study goals. Now you're gonna to have to make sure that you've allocated the time to achieving them. So good goals can't save you if you don't allocate the time to make them happen. So if you're setting a lot of goals, but finding that you're not getting around to achieving them, then consider whether you might be overcommitted. And I see this a lot in students and admittedly both staff, but this can impair our ability to make significant progress in any given area. So make sure that for each of the goals that you've set, you've allocated time in your schedule to move towards them. And finally, if you're feeling brave, consider making your goals public in some way. So this might be to express them to a close friend or put them up in a public domain like social media or share with a relevant group, perhaps a study group. Public commitment uh, can increase the likelihood that we will follow through with our goals. And I use this one quite regularly. So where to start? So I've told you a lot about how to construct good goals and to do good goal setting, but I might have overwhelmed you in the process. So what I'm trying to do here uh, is give you some specific advice on what you need to do now in terms of setting goals for the upcoming semester or the upcoming term. And I call it my seven point goal setting challenge. So first, set yourself an outcome goal. Determine what the average grade is you would like to get for this upcoming semester or this upcoming term and set it just beyond what you think your ability level is. Like I said, if you're a credit average student, aim for a distinction. Second, I want you to set some mastery goals for each of the topics that you've got this semester. Now this might require you to go in and look at some of the materials, what you'll cover in that topic, but I want you to identify at least one thing for each topic that you're really keen to learn, something that you will know by the time that topic has finished and set one of those mastery goals for each topic. Third, I want you to set what I call some productivity goals. These relate to how you're gonna use your time. How will you structure your day so that you get all your assignments done, you get all your revision done, and you find the right balance between study and work and your private life. So fourth, I'd like you to set some what I call ability goals. So there might be some areas of study that you don't think you're particularly good at. Maybe it's referencing, structuring assignments, or learning things by rote. I want you to identify at least one area that you would like to improve on over the course of the semester. Fifth, I'd like you to set a personal goal. You've got activities outside of your studies, and we know that setting goals in our personal lives can often lead to improvements in our professional and our study lives as well. So pick an interest or a hobby or an aspect of your life outside of study and set a goal in relation to that. Six. Post these goals somewhere where you can see them. So maybe it's up on the fridge, maybe it's at the front of your diary, uh, maybe it's up in the space where you study. What you wanna do is be reminding yourself on a regular basis over the course of the semester of the things that you set out to achieve during that semester. And finally, number seven, adjust the goals if necessary. I talked before about the fact that goals can go from being challenging uh, to being anxiety provoking. So it's perfectly fine to go back and revisit each of your goals 
and change them based on the circumstances that you find yourself in. So where to from here? So the Student Learning Support Service have told me that if you like this video and you like this module, then you might like a couple of related modules. So one of them is the Assignments One Byte at a Time module. So you'll learn more about how to take a large project or a big project and carve it into smaller chunks so that you can achieve it gradually and incrementally. The second module that you might be interested in is the Due Date Tactics module, where you take a closer look at how to integrate some of the goals that you might have set as a result of this module into your semester schedule and map a plan to completion from the beginning to the end of the year. So thank you very much for, for joining me uh, for this module on goal setting. I hope you got something out of it. I look forward to meeting you again in a future module. Have a good day.